And I am recording this class since so many of you have asked me to record classes. So this class is going to be on gratitude. So I'm going to invite you, yesterday we did a lot of heart openers, and today we're going to focus on opening our hearts as well. So I'm going to invite you to come on down onto the mat on your back. Don't you love yoga practices that start like in Shavasana? You're like, yes, yes, let's just let the body flop open. Be grateful for Shavasana, right? You're like, oh man, I do this pose really well. Although some people say Shavasana can be the hardest because it's about calming not only the body but the mind. Palms are up, feet flop open, close the eyes. And ask yourself what your relationship with gratitude is. From a positive psychology standpoint, there's been so much study around the power of gratitude. You know, and I don't exactly understand how they do it, but somehow they can measure the vibrational energy of our emotions. I'd love to learn more about that because you all know I'm such a science nerd. And gratitude is one of the highest, highest meaning good. It just really opens our heart, it opens our minds. Gratitude, one of the highest vibrational energies that we can experience. And when we really feel gratitude in our hearts, and we think about gratitude in our minds, it helps create a heart and brain coherence, which is tremendously good for us energetically. So what I'm going to invite you to do now is bring the soles of the feet onto the floor. And extend that leg long and bring the right knee over to the left. So, and the arms are out in a T posture, making space as necessary. I'm just tapped against the wall. Okay. Now, keep the shoulders down. This is, you know, early in the practice. So, it's okay if that knee floats quite a bit. It's more important to keep the shoulders down than get the knee down. And then we're going to inhale and we're going to bring the arm up like it's a huge, making an arching rainbow across the sky. And then touch the hand and draw the fingers up the inside of the arm, across the heart, and come back into your twist, looking to the right. Big arcing rainbow across the sky and then bring that arm up the inner the hand up the inner arm across anahata chakra our heart space and the arm melts down and you look to the right so just go at your own pace rolling the head on the neck and feel yourself just as if you know you're gently Inviting the heart to just flower open, bloom open. Because if you, you know, as you're drawing this rainbow across the sky, remember our prana, Maya Kosha, our energetic body extends so far beyond our physical body. So as if when you you're rainbowing that arm across the sky as if you're just like, you know, tracing the energy of the heart. And then come on to the back. And bring those knees into the chest and rock it out. Roll the feet on the ankles. Roll the head on the neck. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to extend the right leg long. And now the left knee is going to come down to the right. My bone is not silenced. There we go. 
And remember, keeping the shoulders down is more important than getting that knee down. So the arms are out like a T, all right? And we're looking over that left arm, or maybe the eyes are closed and you're just turning the head as if you're looking over the left arm. And then you create that beautiful, big, arching rainbow. And thinking again about gratitude, and you can either just have this general openness to drawing more gratitude into your life, or you can focus on something specific, what you're grateful for, as if you're embracing it with this left arm and then drawing it into the body, into the heart, and rolling out and looking at the left arm. So having this be a beautiful, easy twist that goes all the way up into the cervical spine, i.e. the neck. And have it feel really good, just this easy movement. And as the fingers trace the skin, have that feel really nice too. Sending yourself love, kindness, Opening of the heart. Let's do one more. And then roll onto the back body. Flatten out the back body. Flatten out the lumbar spine. Soles of the feet are bent. Soles of the feet are, are on the floor. Knees are bent. Oh. And then bring those knees into the chest and just rock it out in a way that feels good to you. Massaging the sacrum, massaging the lumbar spine. Maybe starting to swim those knees around. And breathing here. Being so grateful for this time on the mat. So grateful for your decision to invest this time in taking care of yourself, loving yourself. Hug those knees in. And then let's gently rock it back and forth. If this feels good on the long muscles of the spine, the erector spinae. Keep rocking it out. And let's do three more. This is supposed to be very healing to our neurological systems. That's, I got that from um, Gurmukh Karpalsa, who's the Kundalini master yogi, whom I've spoken to you of before. She's amazing. And then build up your momentum and come on up to standing. So breathing here in your Urdhva Sasana. Arms are up, feet are planted. Palms shine up, palms facing each other. Soften those knees. And just feel yourself as if you're a column of light. Inhaling along the length of the body. Lifting up and just feeling into the vibrational energy inside the body, really connecting with prana mind kosha. Prana means energy. And then exhale those hands down. Come on down, fold down. Hang out here in your forward fold. Soften those knees as much as you need to. <sighs> Right? And maybe sweat gently sway from side to side. As if you're like in the water. Rooting those feet down. And then inhale, arch up halfway flat back. And exhale, release. And you know, y'all know how much I love bringing an appreciative inquiry lens to our practices. 
Exhale the hands down to the heart space. So what I invite you to think about here in this practice is think about when you are the most grateful. When do you feel the most connected to gratitude? Inhale those arms out and up, reach up. And arch over. Mmm, how about that feel really good? Oh man, that feels so good. Inhale. So appreciative inquiry is when we look for what's working well in our lives, and then we effectively unpack it. Meaning that, you know, <clears throat> I want more of this. I want more gratitude in my life. Well, let's look at when I'm most grateful. What is it? What happens when I'm most grateful? And then dive down. Come on down. <clears throat> Bend those knees. Hang the head. Is it when you're with animals? Is it when you're listening to music? Is it when you're outside in nature? Is it when you're connected to your creativity, right? Whatever it is. Breathing. Inhale, arch up halfway. And this kind of self-inquiry, hands frame the foot, step it back, is really powerful. Now, as I always tell you all, when I am asked a question in an environment such as this, you know what my answer usually is? <laughs> It's usually me like like a deer in the headlights. My eyes get really big and I'm like, eh. <laughs> let the hips relax down. So if you're like that, it doesn't mean that you're not grateful. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It means you're like me, yay. Let those hips relax down. So don't stress. Don't stress, it's a question. It's such a powerful question. And if you don't get a quick answer, good, good. Because it means I hope that you keep thinking about it. Bring it off the mat. Bring those hips back, toes stay down, fold over the leg. Ardha Hanumanasana, half split. Inhale it forward. Exhale it back. Remember that yoga, the true philosophy of yoga, most of the time that we're living our yoga, we're not on the mat. When you really embrace the true philosophy of yoga, it becomes a 24 hour a day kind of thing. Inhale it forward. And Swadhyaya, self-study. Ah, oh, so beautiful. Curl those back toes under. Ground the hands, step it back. Walk your dog out. Tailbone rises up, head hangs heavy. Roll that head on the neck. My neck has been tight the past few days. I don't know if I slept wrong or what. So think again, when are you most grateful? And at, you know, as we do our our conversational space at the end of class. I'd love for you to share those with me. When are you most grateful? If you have a quick answer. Glide forward, plank pose. Breathing here in your plank. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Tuck the tail. Stacking bone on bone. This is so good for our bone health. Building density. Building strength. Here's a gratitude practice, right? When you finally get to come out of plank. <laughs> Another few breaths. And then come on down. Ashtang Pranam or Chaturanga. Y'all know I'm not much of a Chaturanga girl these days. Hands under shoulders. Inhale, lift. Mujangasana. Exhale it down. Inhale it up. Exhale down. Inhale, lift. Exhale down. And then press into those hands. Come on up onto the knees. And we're coming into Anahatasana. 
which is Anahata, is the name of our heart chakra. So this is the heart opening pose. So pressing the hands in. It's also referred to as puppy dog, puppy dog stretch. So pressing into those hands, opening up, lighting up the underarms. This is super good for our immune system. It really stimulates the lymph, lymph nodes into the arms. Breathing. Another breath. And then walk those hands back, hands under shoulders, knees under hips, and inhale, lift. One of the reasons that yoga is so incredibly good for us from an immune standpoint is the thing that's fascinating about our bodies. We've got, you know, our, um, our heart that, that circulates our blood, right? So we've got this organ that um, its job is to move our blood around. And then we have our lymph, which is, you know, what runs through our lymph nodes. And the only way that lymph is moved around is through the contraction of our muscles. So that's why exercise, you know, any kind of exercise is so good for our immune system because it circulates lymph, the lymph fluid through our system, flushing, you know, fresh um, lymph fluid into the lymph nodes which is where so much of our immunity lives. So we're inhaling as the tailbone rises and the head comes up. And we're exhaling as the tailbone tucks, the mid back rises and the head comes down. So really breathe into the heart. Closing the eyes and again, thinking about your relationship to gratitude or bringing a specific Thing in mind that you're grateful for and just really lean in. And then walk those hands forward, <coughs> curl the toes, lift the hips, down dog, walk your dog out. Settle in one heel down and then the other. Tailbone rises up, head hangs heavy. Maybe roll the head on the neck if that feels good. And then step that right foot forward. Hands frame the foot. And drop the knee. Low runner's lunge. Just allow the hips to release down. Roll those shoulders down. Hmm. What are you grateful for? Right now I'm grateful that I finally moved a fan into my yoga room. It feels so nice. Yay. Set those hips back. Toes stay down, folding over the leg. Inhale forward. This is such a classic way of opening up the legs because so much of the health of our spine lives, resides in the hamstrings. So now we exhale those hips back, the toes rise up, and we breathe into the back of the leg. Lengthening those hamstrings. Inhale forward. And exhale it back. Toes rise up. Inhale forward. And exhale back. <clears throat> Inhale it forward. Curl the back toes under, step forward, forward fold. Arms hang heavy, soften those knees, maybe a little bit of a gentle sway back and forth. And then inhale those arms all the way up, reach up. And let's arch over. Inhale it, other direction. Mm. Inhale, lift it up, come up onto the balls of the feet, a little bit of balance, good focus gaze. And settle those heels down, come on down, forward fold. Soften those knees as much as you need to, to really let that head hang heavy. Inhale, arch up halfway, flat back. Exhale, release. 
and step it back, down dog. Walk your dog out. Closing the eyes, eyes roll up and in in Sambhavi Mudra. Remembering that the seed sound for the heart space is yam, yam, okay? So maybe breathing into the heart, yam. Float that right leg back and up, stretch it up, lift it up, and then step it forward. Coming into our Vera one. Lift it up. Beautiful. Hips are squared forward. Beautiful. Open heart. Stepping off onto that right foot. Arms can go out like airplane wings. Good focus gaze. I just lost my balance. So find a good focus gaze. And it's so funny, right? I'm bobbling all over the place, and I bobbled all over the place yesterday. Sometimes I don't know if it's the phase of the moon or if it's barometric pressure, but sometimes balance is so much harder, right? Both hands come down, standing split. Mm, breathe in here, bend that knee, step it back, zero one. So wherever you are, just breathe, just breathe and come back to it. Just have that kind of beginner's mind, right? And just kind of notice, huh, look at that. My balance is off today. Breathing here, really opening, squeezing the kidneys and the adrenals, which are right at the back waist. Mm. Another breath. And then let's open it up into our Vera tube. Okay? And taking the, um, putting the, the thumb and the middle finger together. All right, breathing in. I haven't been as focused on mudra lately. Sorry about that, y'all. I know that you enjoy them. I'll try to be better about it going forward. And then take reverse. And side angle. And that, that arm goes down and around. Come back up. Vera two. And hands either side of the foot, come on down. Down dog. Now your choice, child's pose, rest in down dog, or flow with me. Listening to your body. Another breath. And then come on down, Ashtankarnam. Float it up, Ujangasana. Curl the toes, lift the hips, down dog. And flip that left leg back and up, reach it up. And step it forward. Vero one. Set your feet. Come on up. Okay, taking your mudra, middle finger and thumb touch. Hips are squared forwards. And then we're stepping off into our Vera 3. Arms can go back like airplane wings, so good rounded leg. And then the leg floats up, good focus gaze. Breathing. Shaking is good, my left leg is shaking. Hands come down, stand a big split. Folding over that leg. Remembering you can put your hands on blocks, step it back, float up, zero one, and then open it up, Vera Drasana two. Lengthen your stance, your hips are now open towards the long edge of the mat. Taking your mudra if you'd like. Breathing here in your Vera two, and take reverse and side angle, and then float that arm down and around. Come back up, Vera Drasana two. Mm. And then hands either side of the foot. Come on down. Down dog, walk your dog out. 
Head hangs heavy, tailbone lifts up. Plugging those hands in. And let's widen the knees, touch the toes, sit back, come into your child. Back of the hands can be on the mat, fingers still with the thumb touching the middle finger. Breathing here. Allowing yourself to melt into gratitude. Drawing to mind what it is you want to focus on that you're so grateful for. What is it? Nice big belly breath. Hmm. Another breath. And then coming forward. Knees are under hips, hands are under shoulders. Curl the toes, lift up, down dog. Head hangs heavy. And then let's step our feet forward. Hanging out here in your forward fold. And inhale those arms all the way up. Reach up, lift up. Bringing hands to the heart space. And again, thinking. Thinking about what it is that you're most grateful for. Thinking about times in your life where it's easiest for you to connect to your gratitude. Eyes are rolled up and in, Sambhali Mudra. And really feel yourself landing, landing in this body. Let's take a nice big inhale. 